What's up guys, it's Mike here with Grow Indoors 365. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell. This way you get notified every single time I upload a video. Now, today I'm actually doing the transition of some of the seeds. I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you, uh, I'm gonna show you right now where we currently stand. Uh, just 48 hours, I posted the last video, 48 hours from the time that I um, drop the seeds into uh, basically the germination stage. We have several. We have two of the of the uh, seeds, the variations that have actually sprouted, um, but one of them actually didn't sprout at all. So let's take a closer look. Let's see what happened. Let's see what went wrong, and we're going to also transition the seeds into the rock. Well, actually, we're not going to transition into rock wool just yet. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you the preparation of the rock wool prior to the transition and uh, we'll go from there. Come on with me. All right, guys. So the next step is basically get yourself a bucket and you get yourself this stuff right here. This is called rock wool. Okay. Let me put the bucket down real quick. Let me tell you a little bit about rock wool. So basically it comes in like a large, enormous sheet. Okay. I just basically here we have, uh, what do I have? Five, ten. One, two, three, four, five, ten. It looks like I have 30. Okay, as you know, I'm fitting nine plants in each reservoir with three across of 27. So, uh, you know, we have three additional plants to play with because once you plant something in these rock holes, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to survive through the transition and actually develop into a plant. So it's important that we kind of plant just a few in addition to however many uh, pod areas we have this way. If one or two die out, we have one or two to replace those two to make sure that we have a full, uh, a, a full uh, return on that yield of 27 uh, reservoir pods capacity. Now going back to the rock wool, basically this is made out of this like um, certain material that is, is, this is technically your growing medium. That's what it's called. This is your growing medium. Okay, this is basically for hydroponics. This is, this replaces dirt. And what I mean by that is that this little piece right here, okay, I basically put, they already come with pre-made holes, but I actually puncture my own hole in just a little, little deeper, a little wider. And uh, that allows me just to make that nice transition with the seed right in there. And that's it, basically from here, what I'm gonna do is now is, I'm gonna take the bucket. All right, I'm gonna take this, this bucket. I'm gonna break all of these individually. I'm gonna fill the bucket up, like not too high, but basically just to submerge the, uh, whatever I have in here, okay? Just submerge all this. So once I have the water in there, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of this Clonex solution. Now I've been using this solution for years and it significantly improves the overall root development for the plants. And it also, I think it allows a little bit of, uh, I think a little more of like a rapid growth, which is good too. And um, I've never had any issues. In addition, I've also used this solution when I was cloning some basil. And uh, I will definitely get into that once I plant some basil. But let me go ahead and uh, put some water in here. And I'm gonna show you when I'm adding the Clonex solution. By the way, everything that you see here, you're gonna find it in the links down below. So make sure to click those links if you're looking for any of these uh, products to uh, maintain your own grow. All right, let's go to the next phase on adding the water and the Clonex solution. See, all I'm doing here is just basically adding water and just wetting the rock wall. And we're also gonna let these, the best, the best result is to let them sit in the water with the Clonex solution for approximately 24 hours. Now that the water is in and covering all the rock wall, basically I just shake up the Clonex solution just a little bit. I don't even barely, um, I don't I don't like to put too much, but I don't put too little. See how much I'm putting in? I bet you that's significantly less than the instructions say, but I'd rather have less than more. Honestly, that's what I even do with the nutrients that I put into my grow. And you guys will see that as we move along. Let's go to the next phase. And what that's gonna be is basically shaking this up, okay? I like to kind of just shake it up like this. You take the solution, you take the water, and you want to give it a good twirl. This way, the solution's kind of spread throughout and allows all the rock wool to get soaked. And that's the whole point of it. Because the rock wool, this is 
your dirt. This is what it is. This is your dirt. Okay, so you have to realize that whatever type of minerals that are absorbed through the soil, okay, when your plant is hypothetically inside the ground, it's in here. So you want that good minerals inside of this once I put that seed in there, all right? All right, guys, so we are back on the sprouter tray here. Uh, if you guys remember, we had the uh, Crispino right here. We also had the um, Austro right here. And over here, we actually have the Green Tower, all right? The bad news is the Green Tower didn't produce anything for me. As you can see, it literally produced nothing. There is no activity. There might be, yeah, nope, nope. It looks like almost one did, but honestly, none of them sprouted, which is a big issue. Now, the Australia is looking good. As you can see here, just within 24, actually, I saw something within eight hours of me putting uh, the seed in here. Now, once they get to this length, it is really important to start transitioning them right away because when the stems get too long, it makes the transition into the rock hole much, much harder. Okay, but as you can see here, there's a nice close-up shot. Look at all those beautiful heads of lettuce. That's now a living, that's now a living plant. Okay, because it's, the life has been activated inside, they're swimming around, and they're ready to be put into the rock hole to start growing. And uh, we definitely have a good variation of, of sprouters here as well. As you can see, uh, a number of them did not. All this means is that the seed are just probably old, okay? When the seeds get too old, they just, I guess, dry out or die out and you can't do anything with them. But in this case, as you can see, we have good sproutage here and the Crispino, and I love Crispino, and the Australia. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So let me take you into the next phase of what we do once we see the tails coming out of the seeds, what is our next step? Let me take you uh, to that next step now. So the next step here is to start transitioning the rock wool into these little nursery cups, okay? As you can see here, these specific uh, cups here, they have a drainage system at the bottom, okay? It's very important because you want the water that you're gonna be pouring in and you'll see further into this video how I water them and why and so forth. But right now, this next step is all about taking these, taking the rock wool here, and basically putting them all throughout. Now I put in 30 rock holes. Um, I don't know how many seeds we're gonna get out, but honestly, the um, the one the one seed, the Chris, uh, the um, um, I forgot what, what the seed's name is called. What is it called? The Austral. That seed is literally ready to go. It needs to be put into these, into the rock holes tonight. And you're gonna see why, because I'm gonna give you a really close, up close shot on why they need to go in tonight. Because if I literally wait any longer, actually everything is going into the cubes tonight, everything. If I wait any longer, what's gonna happen is, the actual tail end of the seed gets way too long and that becomes an issue. And the reason why that becomes an issue is because then you start breaking the actual tails on trying to fit the seeds inside of the rock wall cubes. And it's a complete pain in the butt. All right, so I'm gonna start out with these right here. This is plenty. Now, I'm not going to show you everything, but this is also something that I do here. Okay, as you can see here, I am creating a hole in the, there's base, there's already holes in these. They're pre-made with holes, but what I do is I take this chopstick, okay, and I just kind of rotate within the rock hole cubes because these, the, the spaces are not, fully open and I want the spaces to be fully open this way I can make a very simple transition inside the rock wall now if you don't understand what we're doing here is again remember I mentioned that this is the growing medium okay this is your basically this is the dirt this is your soil now once the seed goes here obviously it develops upward this way 
and the root system grows down below, all through here, through the net cup, into the reservoir, through the water, absorbing nutrients, allowing the plant to flourish. All right, so that's this is what this is. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, again, my name is Michael. I'm an indoor gardener, primarily focusing on hydroponics. Make sure to check out the links down below. Make sure to share this video and make sure to subscribe as well as hit the bell notification. This way you get updates every single time I upload a video, which is going to be frequent now that I'm getting, now that I'm so in gear here, okay, because I'm going to be giving you updates frequently. Now, let me show you how I take those seeds and put them into the Rockwell cubes. All right, so as you see here, I have my seeds here. This is a one type of variation of the seeds that we have been able to germinate. What I do is, this is, you know, this is the method that I use. Um, feel free to try this method. Uh, I could tell you one thing, that it works. Here's, uh, hopefully you're getting a good close upload, a uh, close look, right up close, as you can see there. There's the seed. And it's just sitting right at the tip of the chopstick. And what I do is, see, this is this is why it's so perfect to do this when um, the seeds are in this shape. Because you have to understand, once this gets bigger, okay, once that little, that bottom part, once that bottom part gets bigger, the tail, the root system, it just becomes a lot more difficult to actually get the seed directly into the rock wool. Okay, hopefully you're getting a really nice up close look there. And uh, this is this is all that's, that's needed here, okay? It's a very simple process. Is it tedious? Yes. Uh, will it work in, a, in, in scale? Look, this is what happened. Just, you know, honestly, this just, just broke, okay? Uh, I probably can't save that seed, but you're gonna come across that. You're gonna have those, it's not an issue. It's just part of the process because this is the way that I chose to put my seeds in. Now, the reason why I've done this this way is because a lot of times in the past, I was having a lot of issues with dropping seeds in and they were having a hard time to come up. Okay, so I always, I, I found this method and just by placing the seeds in there, I actually don't like how this one came in there, even though actually, nope, see, this one might have broke too. Now, I mean, seeds are extremely fragile, okay? And again, this is my method. And I can assure you, it works. Because once I put these in here, within 24 hours of over, with, with having the dome over this and being under the light, all the heads, I already have green tops. Within 24 hours, we already have beautiful green heads that are literally the, the lettuce has started it's 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 growing timeline it's just it's it's incredible and once you know just within a few days it's just, it's just beautiful it's just literally i love um seeing the uh the plants flourish just from nothing from a little seed i mean they were literally just nothing just a few days ago they were a teeny little seed but now they're they're a living life force i mean they're they they've they they're growing you know as you can see here with the with the tail these seeds are growing and they will continue to grow and it's crazy you can actually leave the seeds in the water and they'll continue to grow it's unbelievable it's unbelievable what can be done when you try and just kind of play around with it uh, actually I think that'll be actually a really interesting experiment to do just put a couple of seeds into one of these uh, dishes one of my <laughs> dishes from the kitchen and just leave them there. Now, I don't know the type of success I might get uh, if I don't put some light on them because obviously uh, that's what hydroponics is all about. It requires mimicking of the light. Um, so we're, you know, when you're going indoors. So maybe I'll put them in the dish and just have a bunch of lettuce just kind of grow out of here. But as you can see here, um, this is what needs to be done. And I'll show you what I do in the next phase, which will basically be putting a dome over this. Once all the seeds are in, we put a dome over this and we just put it under the light. Now I'll show you that in the next segment in this video. So let's go ahead and, and move into that phase and I'll show you exactly what the next part is in relations to the start of the entire grow phase. 
Hey guys, and now we're in the next phase of what's really going on. Now, this is already two days since I, uh, I placed these little net pods into this little dome shape. As you can see here, we have a lot of condensation, which is expected because inside here, it's currently 79 degrees. Sometimes it's probably about 80 degrees or so. Um, but as you can see here, this condensation is good. So you're gonna need something like this, like a large dome shape with that tray that I mentioned to you inside those nursery cups. So it's been about two days since I went ahead and put these into the rock wool. And as you can see here, every single one of them sprouted and they're actually doing incredibly well. They look absolutely wonderful. Look at those little guys. Incredible, right? Incredible. Once again, my method has worked. These look great. Now, as you know, um, I could only fit inside each one of these, I could fit nine plants. So that's 27 across. And I believe, what do we have here? We have 24, we have 30. So, um, as I mentioned, we're gonna take a few and we're gonna get rid of just a few. And uh, unfortunately, this, this has to happen <laughs> in this case because sometimes you never know if uh, a few or one will make it or not. But, but, but you know, in, in the next couple of days, it's actually at this point in time, right now, it's actually, I feel by looking at these, I think it's okay to start putting them into the net pods and the rock wool and basically setting everything here up with water, with the pump, and that'll be in the next video. But this video was basically, um, Kind of a step-by-step -step guide on the germination stage transporting into the rock wool getting the rock wool ready uh, with the solution of the root growth solution and kind of putting them under the light here for a few days and showing you guys that the method of germination that i use by simply tapping the seeds into that little dish works really well and this is just how i transport them directly into their uh, the rock wool, which is again the growing medium, which is equivalent to the soil in the hydroponic world. So I'm going to end this episode here, guys. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit the links down below. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you're all having a fantastic Sunday. And uh, on the next episode during the week, you're going to see me setting up all the reservoirs. You're going to see me talking about the pumps, which again is the best pump, which is the general hydroponic pump. We're going to turn on the fan, which is the Vernado fan. I love this fan. All quiet equipment, as well as setting up the um, the aerator stones, filling these up with water and going from there. And obviously putting all of these, all of these plants all across in here. And they're going to be positioned inside of each one of those net pods with the clay pebbles surrounding them. All right, so once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. This is Michael with Growing Indoors 365. Thank you all so much. Talk to you guys soon.